In order to interpret the things a computer does, we often have to be able to see things the way the machine sees them. This is particularly true when we're looking at how the machine stores things. To understand that, we're going to need to understand binary, octal, and hexadecimal. When we're talking about numbers, there's an important distinction that we need to make. The value of a number is distinct from the way we write it. For example, here is the way we typically write the number 95. We write it as a 9 followed by a 5. But its value is a quantity. You can think of 95 circles. The number of circles is the quantity. The way we write it is a 9 followed by a 5. The system for writing numbers that we're used to is called decimal, and we'll explain why in a minute. But there are lots of ways of writing something that means that same quantity. For example, in Roman numerals, the quantity 95 is written VC. I won't even attempt to say how Chinese and Hindi write that quantity, but no matter what it looks like, those represent the same number of circles that our 95 represents. When we work with computers, there are a couple of other number systems that we need to understand, and the goal of this video is to explain binary, octal, and hexadecimal. The decimal numbers that you're used to are an example of a positional number system. In positional systems, the value of the character you write depends on which position it's in in the number. For example, 123 and 321 are made of the same characters, but they represent very different values because the characters 3 and 1 are in different positions. In decimal, the positions of a number represent the powers of 10. That's where the dec in decimal comes from. So when we write 123, we are really saying 100 plus 20 plus 3. And 321 is 300 plus 20 plus 1. So each position multiplies the number by a power of 10. 100 is 1 times 10 squared. 20 is 2 times 10 to the first power, and 3 is 3 times 10 to the zeroth power. Because it is based on the powers of 10, decimal is also called base 10. In base 10, one position in a number can have 10 values, 0 through 9. When they designed computers, it was easier and much more reliable to make the individual values that are stored just be switches that have values of on and off. So it only has two values in each position, 0 and 1. That means that the computer thinks in base 2, which is also called binary, and the positions of the number represent the powers of 2. The value 95, remember those 95 circles, is written as 1011111 in binary. Remembering that binary is a positional system and that the positions are associated with the powers of 2, we can convert that binary into decimal by just expanding it using the definition of binary. Each position is either 0 or 1 times the power of 2 for that position. So the leftmost one is in the position associated with 2 to the 6th power, which is 64, so it adds 64 to the value. Similarly, the rightmost one is associated with 2 to the 0th power, which is 1, so it adds 1 to the value. Add up the powers of 2 for the positions that have 1s, and you have the decimal number that represents the same value that the binary number represented. Similarly, you can go the other direction. If you start with the decimal number and want to find the binary representation of that same value, we have to find the powers of 2 that sum to the value we want. The easiest way to do this is to start with our number, 95 is our example, the biggest power of 2 that is less than 95 is 64. You should definitely know the powers of 2. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, and so on. Each one is twice as big as the one before it. Definitely. So, we can represent that 64 with a 1 in our binary number, and that leaves us a value of 31 left to convert. The next lower power of 2 is 32, but that's bigger than our 31, so we can't use that. We write a 0 in that position. The next lower power of 2 is 16. Putting a 1 in that position leaves us 15 left to convert. We just continue with that 
all through the powers of 2 down to 1. We put a 1 for every power of 2 that we used and a 0 for every one we skip. So we think in decimal and the computer thinks in binary. However, looking at binary is hard. Those long sequences of zeros and ones are hard to see and really hard to understand. It's like when we have really long numbers in decimal. We write them with commas, separating them into groups of three. And we kind of think about those groups separately. When you read long numbers like this, we read each group and then give them units. 123 billion. 463,002. So we can think of that really as being in base 1,000 with three positions being used as the multiplier. That higher level grouping helps us really understand the value that a long sequence of decimal characters represents. When humans work with binary, we do the same sort of higher level grouping. One system that uses this is octal, where the positions are the powers of eight. If you group three binary digits, the values they can represent are zero through seven. So we can take a binary number and split it into groups of three, convert each group to its value, and then those combine to represent the same overall quantity in octal. So converting from binary to octal only requires grouping by threes and converting each group. We can convert a number from octal to decimal just by using the definition of base 8, the value in each position multiplied by the appropriate power of 8. Just like octal comes from grouping binary digits into groups of 3, it's also common to do the same thing in groups of 4. Four binary digits can represent 16 values, so the result will be base 16, which we call hexadecimal. Now, in decimal, we needed 10 characters, the characters 0 through 9. And in binary, we needed two characters, 0 and 1. So it stands to reason that in base 16, we're going to need 16 characters. We do that by using 0 through 9 for the same values that we use them for in decimal. But then we add the characters a through f to represent the values 10 through 15. So to convert binary to hexadecimal, we make groups of four positions. Then we convert each position from binary to its appropriate hexadecimal character. So 0101 has ones in the positions for 1 and 4, so its value is 5. 1111 represents 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 15. We write that with an F. So 101111 in binary is the same value as 5F is in hexadecimal. And, like always, we can convert from hexadecimal back to decimal using the definition of hexadecimal, 5 times 16 to the first power plus f, 15, times 16 to the zeroth power is 95. The next few slides are for practice. For each, pause when it first comes up and solve the problem yourself. Then unpause, and I'll walk you through my solution. Since I know the powers of 2, converting to binary is the easiest of these. 128 is the biggest power of 2 that is less than 156, so I start there. For each subsequent power of 2, if it is less than or equal to what's remaining, I subtract it and record a 1. If it's greater than what's remaining, I skip it and record a 0. The sequences of zeros and 1s that generates is a binary equivalent of 148. Once I have the binary number, Converting to octal and hexadecimal just requires grouping the ones and calculating the values for each group. The conversion from binary to octal or binary to hexadecimal is easy, so I never go directly from decimal to those. I always go from decimal to binary and then from binary to octal and hexadecimal. Converting anything to decimal requires multiplying the values in each position by the appropriate power of the base. Since this is binary, the base is 2 and the positions are the powers of 2. Again, we just need to multiply this out. Remember that octal is base 8, so the positions are the powers of 8. For this, we just need to undo the grouping. 
convert each position to its binary equivalent, and string them together. Convert anything to decimal, that just means multiply it out. The only catch here is we have to remember that a means 10.